This is the no internet dino game that I created a while back. When I made this game, it was so that I could have something to upload for this channel. I never expected anyone to play the game. But then some of you motherfuckers actually played it and found bugs in it and started commenting about the bugs which put me in a situation. There is an obvious bug in the game that I was very well aware about even before uploading the game. When you keep moving left or right, the cactus stops spawning in front of the dino. This can lead to insane scores that should not be attainable. This occurs because of the way I had implemented the spawning of the cactus. The cactus is spawned based on the dino's current position by adding an offset in the z-axis. But since the dino is moving in a different direction, the cactus spawn position becomes outdated. Fixing this bug is pretty easy. You just check whether the player is pressing the left or right key and then shift the spawn position of the cactus on the x-axis by adding an offset. Pretty cool solution passed me, but that is not the correct way to solve this bug. Instead, we spawn the cactus in an ellipse shape around the dino rather than the previous straight line. This way, no matter which direction the player moves, the cactus will always spawn around the dino. But what's wrong with my solution? It is wrong. In my last video, I used a shader to bend the wall. This was done so that it doesn't look like the cactus appeared out of thin air. While there was nothing wrong with it, I got bored looking at it. The tutorial I followed had a checkbox to make it look like the dino was on a tiny planet. And it looked great, although I had to make more loop cuts in the ground for it to work. Alright, what other bugs do we have? Yeah, jumping no longer feels like you are on a moon. Also, the dino used to occasionally get stuck while running, which is now fixed. And then the other fixes are really boring, I'm not going to talk about them. Let's talk about the new things I've added. The game has changed quite a bit since last time, and by quite, I mean a lot. For starters, we now have skins. And for selecting these skins, I had to make a whole shop system. I designed a lot of shop system before finally setting on one, so let's rate them. My goal with the shop was to have an easy to use interface, which is why I made this scrollable UI. Each green tile here would be a skin that you can select. And if you want to change the object, you simply scroll down to set the skin for let's say a cactus or the bird. But I couldn't figure out how just having one button for selecting all the skin was going to work. 5 out of 10. This was an ambitious design that I came up with, which looks like a slot machine. The skin would stab onto its place and yes, it has just one button for selecting all the skins, but this time it works. Simple and elegant, but I forgot to leave space for labels and text boxes. Like, how are you guys supposed to know how to unlock skin? We needed instructions. Also, how was the player supposed to know if the skin was already unlocked? 7 out of 10. After ditching this design, I went through many more design changes, such as this one, which was supposed to have a live preview of how the skin would look in game. 3 out of 10. And then there was this side-scrolling one, which almost made it through as the final design, but same issue as the slot machine. Adding labels and instructions would clutter the screen. 6 out of 10. After many trial and errors, I finally landed on a design that worked. It had a navigation bar on the left side where you can select which object skin you would like to change. The skins are now in a vertical list layout, and each of them is a button and has a small picture to indicate which skin it is. There is the name of the skin, what you need to do in order to unlock the skin, and how long before you actually unlock the skin all inside just one button. Making the shop system took me way longer than expected. Designing a UI is not easy, and writing and rewriting scripts for UI again and again took a long time. With the shop system done, I started working on the skins. Let me show you all the skins I added. The first skin is the standard skin that is unlocked from the beginning. It has the default grey and white color, not that interesting. Next, I added a dark mode skin. I took the color palette from the original game and recolored the models in Magicka Voxy. I had to do it for each object, the dino, cactus, bird, ground and the sky. It was painful but the end result was satisfying, so it was worth it. Since you have a white skin and a black skin, it only made sense to add a brown skin as well. This skin is brown and chocolatey. Wait, who wrote this script? The next skin that I added had a candy world like feel. I didn't really know what I wanted, I was just messing around with colors and came up with something that I was satisfied with. The next skin had a beautiful sunset in a sandy desert. The cactus are purple for some reason, overall it's a beautiful skin pack. This was my favorite skin out of all. When I think of a tiny planet, the first thing that comes to my mind is Kai's planet from Dragon Ball Z. I spent way too much time making this skin and I'm quite satisfied with it. I added clouds in the skybox and a road in the middle of the planet. And look, you can go around the planet. I colored the board with Gregory's color palette and the cactus with bubbles. But how will you get these skins? Glad you asked. All the skins are unlockable. You just have to play the game. For unlocking the cactus skin, you jump over the cactus. For boards, you go under them. And for the ground and sky, you need to set a high score to unlock them. And for the dino skin, well, I ran out of ideas how to unlock it. So I created these fossils. 
collecting these fossils were unlock the dino skin. Does it look like fossils? I don't know. I, I looked at this picture while trying to make it. it. It does look kind of weird, I guess. Now that the shop is done, let's remake the main menu. We need to add a shop button and I was thinking about adding a settings menu as well. So I started redesigning the main menu with the title of the game at the center of the screen. For the background, I designed an image in Photoshop. As you can see, art is in the sharpest knife in my toolkit. This design looks decent, but soon enough I realized that I was drifting away from the original game. I remade a new background in Photoshop using the model renders instead of drawing them by hand. I am still not satisfied with it, but for now, it works. The settings button opens a simple panel with two buttons for muting music and sound. And yes, I added music to the game. For now, it's just simple jazz music that I found online. But if any of you have something better that will go with the game, let me know. It is finally done. I have finished this project. I can now make that stupid YouTube video. And move on in life. I guess a dinosaur game without Meteor Shower wouldn't feel right. I made a meteor in Magicka Voxel and brought it into Unity. I gave it a tree effect and fire particles using Unity's particle system. I wanted the meteor shower to begin after the dinosaur had crossed a certain score. The meteor spawns above in the sky and rushes towards the dino. And touching the meteor obviously kills the dino. When the meteor shower begins, the cactus and birds stop spawning. I also wanted to add dark clouds when the meteor shower began, but it didn't work according to my plan. And because I had already spent way too much time on this project, I had to ditch it for now. Maybe I'll add it in the future. Well, that's it. That's all I added to the game for now. If you want to play the game, it's available on edge.io. The link is down in the description. And if you don't have anything else to watch, you should watch one of these videos. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.